several years ago, I was preparing a lecture series in my research area, and I work with an object called Hermitian modular forms. And I was like, how did this originate? Like, where where did this name come from? What was the first instance of this? And I was um, surprised to stumble upon three papers from the early 1950s published in the most prestigious journal in math um, that introduced these objects. I had not been aware of these papers, and I wasn't aware of the person even who defined them, which is kind of surprising because they were apparently important at the time and have been important since. Uh, and that person's name is Hel Brown. It was a woman, which was also surprising because there are very few women in math. And I tried to find out more about her, but pretty quickly hit some dead ends and eventually just went back to doing math, but was curious about her in the back of my mind. And I got here and I was talking to someone interested in math history. And I said, hey, have you heard of Hal Brown? And um, he said, oh, we have archives for her here. So I met with Caitlin, the archivist, and she was really helpful. And so I started reading them. It's had a huge impact on the direction of my research and my focus since I've been here. She started out working on really classical problems in number theory, which then led in an organic way to working with these so-called Hermitian modular forms. They're really, if you ask someone though from a modern perspective, if you'd asked me like five years ago why I was studying them, I would give this very different answer which had nothing to do with classical or wouldn't start from classical problems, but would start from a modern formulation and something called the Langlands program, which also originated at the IIS, but is um, comes from a totally different angle. One other thing that's been really interesting with that is going through some of the old math. I've come across things that were helpful to my students, and so my PhD students are getting these emails like, hey, look at this paper from the 1940s. It has what, and I have a student where it actually like strengthened his result using something that was written there that just was kind of forgotten from collective memory.